So in other words, she's helped parents around the world for 30 years, and she helps them go from despair to hope with practical hands-on ideas. If you, if you get a good relationship going, you can go into those teen years with so much more fun, joy, inspiration. Never again in our life will we have the energy we have when we're a teenager. Like you could take on the entire world, the passion, the energy, like these people are incredible people. And if more of us parents could see how incredible they are, I think they would be more incredible in the world instead of slacking off and being discouraged. And, you know, so many of them moping around and all that stuff, like they don't need to be like that. They just don't often have enough support to, to really let their light shine. And, and so that's, I I mean, what I love about this too, is just helping parents get to that place where, you know, when our one-year-old, what's a one-year-old's developmental stage, what do they achieve in general? What do you think? What's one of their developmental achievements? I mean, they're learning to trust, right? They're learning whether they can trust their caregiver. Oh, they, they're learning- uh, physically, just an easy one. Oh, okay. Walk, like walk. There you go. They're walking. <laughs> so, so what do you do when they walk? You clap and you're so excited. Yay! Yeah. Call grandma, get a video. Yeah. So when the teenager does their developmental stage, which is to rebel, rebellion right. is the way that they individuate, that they learn their own values. Who am I separate from my parents? Like literally that's their developmental phase is rebelling. Yeah. And so when they do that, what do we do? We get frustrated. <laughs> yeah. Don't you do like, let's get to that place where when the teenager starts rebelling, we're like, yay, Larry Malik, we're here. Time <laughs> to go. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, I'm yeah. such a big fan of that because I think having developmentally appropriate expectations is one of the biggest gifts we can give our children. The teenager, like their emotions are driving everything and which is also hormonal, like the hormones yeah. and the emotions and all that is kind of interconnected. And so they're their emotions are super high and super low and total roller coaster. So they're like just on this huge roller coaster. And if we, the parent are on that roller coaster with them, we'll die. I mean, literally, <laughs> <laughs> like we're, we're too old for that. Like we can't, the, the teenager is designed for the emotional roller coaster. It is part of their development. That is what is going on. And so as a parent, learning how to unplug from that. And I teach a tool called detaching with love. And so you're not, you're detaching, you know, you're not ignoring or like not existing in it. You're just, you're unplugging emotionally. You're separating your emotions from your child. I remember I would pick my daughter Brie up from high school and literally she would get in the car and I would just tense up. I mean, those emotions are just (laughs) so strong. And, you know, we're so connected to our kids. We feel that even if they don't say anything and uh, I'd have to like, (laughs) relax the body, breathe Deb. Like, this is not yours. This is hers. You know, like I would have to monitor myself and get myself calm and say, Ooh, rough day, huh? <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> and, and there's, there's ways we parents can, if you know, if your children are reacting emotionally and having these really strong reactions, and you know, you tend to take that on either because you're empathetic or you're just the parent who's super connected to your child. Yeah you want to protect your own emotions because it's actually robbing them of their experience. When you take their emotions on, it's, it's, it's taking away from their world and their experience. And it's not allowing them to learn how to navigate their world when you're, when you're taking that on. So it's actually mean to them to, to take, to carry, to take their emotions to, to take on their emotions with them. You need to be that like strong stand of a love and support and, and kind of holding a, a good space. And so one of the things that you can do is to imagine you have a lead vest covering your body, like in the dentist's office when you're getting x-rays. So all that emotion coming at you from your child, it can't penetrate. Like it can't get you, <laughs> you're protected. Right. you know, your arms are free. Yeah. You can still hug your child when they need a hug. Your face is free. You can talk to them and, you know, say loving things or whatever you need to say, but your body's protected from taking all that emotion on. And I think that's a good little mental visualization that we can do when we're in those moments of like, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose it. Like take a deep breath. Imagine your lead vest. I love that. <laughs> 
and then go for it. Have a conversation and see how much better you do when you're not reacting emotionally to their emotions.